AMD announcements, some more of EA's server shutdown, some gaming news, and more. This is WSGF News. I'm Simon. This week, uh, Chris and I scheduled didn't line up, so I'm just kind of soloing it right now from the Alternative Recording Studio, which is a fancy word for my desk, or a fancy name for my desk. So, uh, you know, he had to work some stuff to do. Uh, I had some other stuff to do. And we would have recorded this morning, the morning of me recording, but the night before, I got a wreck. And, you know, I'll, I'll show some of the pictures. Uh, no big deal. Car did its job, protected me. I just got a couple bruises here and there. But um, it happens. You just move on. So let's move on. Last week, we didn't announce it. We didn't talk about it. And we talked about one of their other projects. But CCP uh, celebrated their 11th anniversary with Eve last week. So happy anniversary to y'all. May 6th uh, is the uh, celebration date. Sorry I missed it. But, you know, just... At least we talked about it. So congratulations on 11 years, and hopefully y'all have more, more, more years to come. Now, AMD. AMD did an announcement. Announced Project Skybridge. What this is, is the project or a, a uh, process, a plan to do a shared pin layout for both their x86 and their ARM processors. Now, I'm not going to go too much about this, because I know I think Lasky really wanted to talk about this. But uh, that's just, if I read it and understood it correctly, it would seem like that would be a good thing to do. Like if you're a computer builder like me, I like building rigs. And if the rig gets old, instead of just tossing out the rig, you could switch in maybe an ARM processor and it would have more of a continued life. I know Skip is using an ARM processor in his media PC for his kids. So that could be a alternative, you know, your computer gets too old, throw in something like that, and you could run it as a, a media PC. So it, it seems really cool. It seems like for computer builders a way to increase longevity of devices. And But like I said, I don't want to get too much into it because I know, like I said, Chris wanted to talk about it. So we'll, we'll talk about it next week. Now I'm just going to scroll down here. Uh, really, really cool website I found. This was posted on Reddit. Uh, it's 30versus60.com. What this is, is it takes video caps of games and it display, displays it on one as 30 frames per second, on the other at 60 frames per second. And so it's a comparison video. And I know they have uh, Dirt 3, I know they have a couple of BF4 videos. I forget what else, I think Red Orchestra and one other game. Uh, watch, no, Sleeping Dogs maybe, I think is what it is. But uh, really, really cool, it's especially if you're like me, you have a lot of friends that play consoles, uh, and they're like, why would I want to be a, buy a PC? And, well, obviously we all know why we would buy PCs, you know, customization, uh, longevity, and all of that. But it would be, you know, I, it, another thing is like, hey, look, you could do it for 60 frames per second versus like the Xboxes or the Playstations at 30 frames per second. So it's really interesting just to see the difference between 30 and 60. So you can sit there, you can look at the 30 a couple loops, and then go over and look at the 60 and see the, the difference doubling the frames per second has to do. So that's 30 versus 60, 30vs60.com. Check that out, kind of you know, post it to your friends or whatever like that, just to kind of get an experience of what the different uh, uh, frames per second is for for some of these video games. Now, I talked about this last week, or the, well, a couple times ago. EA was shutting down some of their, their master servers, you know, for for online gaming. You you ping the master server and it gives you a list of um, servers that are out there. So they've released, finally, their official kind of listing and exactly what they're going to do on uh, shutdowns. And some of the ones that caught my eye uh, from you know things I've played before, and some of the games that like someone posted on the YouTube about what games would, would be shut down. So some of these games that are going to be shut down are going to be BF1942, BF2, BF2142, Command and Conquer 3, Command and Conquer Generals, Command and Conquer Red Alert 3, and Medal of Honor Allied Assault. So that's just one of of um, many game or one set of many games that are going to be uh, shutting down. No, it's not just limited to PC. And this is all because of the the GameSpy server shutdowns. So 
this one, you know, just a small subset of a lot of games that are going to be shutting down. And it's not just limited to PC. There are some, uh, I think I saw some Wii and PlayStation games up there too. So we'll link the uh, page below. So if you want to read that blog post from EA, so you can see what games is, uh, are going to be shutting down because of the servers. I would suspect that you'll still, be, I mean, you'll still be able to play the games. But I think I, I wouldn't see why people in the community, if the games are still popular, figure out their own way, their own hacks to do that. I wouldn't see why you couldn't do Hamachi and do like a land game with people. So there's, I would assume, and this is just my assumption, there's no official word on this, but there will still be some longevity to these games and some ways to continue playing via multiplayer for these games. So, if we ever hear anything more about that, we'll let you know, but uh, like I said, we'll post the link below and you can check those out. Now, on to some game news. It was announced last week, it's the big thing, Unreal, uh, Unreal Tournament 4. Unreal Tournament 4 was announced, and they announced that when the game is playable, it will be free. Really, really cool. It's going to be a crowdsourced crowd collaboration, from what I've read, between Epic, uh, Unreal Tournament fans, and the Unreal Engine 4 devs. So that'll be really, really cool. Just kind of a group working on um, the project. Eventually, it's going to have a marketplace for the devs, for modders, for asset artists, for gamers, so they can give, buy, sell content. Much like you see with uh, Valve Steam, you know, you can sell the boxes, you can sell the crates, it's like an entire ecosystem for for Steam. So that's really, really cool to see that they're going to do that. Now it's really interesting and really awesome to see, and there's nothing official that this is going to happen, but Michael Vandenboss uh, one of the, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but he's one of the original composers for the original Unreal and Unreal Tournament. He was on one of the Unreal forums asking if there's uh, any interest in him being involved in Unreal 4. So we have some, uh, some of the composers. Me being a musician, I mean, that's really exciting for me to see uh, some of these, you know, this composer come out and be like, hey, I want to help on this too. So some of like the original, original uh, composer, I think he's one of two, two musicians on that. So really, really exciting to see. Now, we, we talked about it being a crowdsourced collaboration. Um, we'll get that in a second. But uh, development's going to be focused on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Now, talking about crowdsourced collaboration, the Unreal Editor has already been ported over to Linux by the community. Really, really exciting. So there's already a push for Linux um, for the game. Speaking more about Linux, on the Steam forum post for uh, Grid Autosport, Someone asked uh, Codemasters, you know, is there going to be Linux support for this game? And Codemasters said they were looking and discussing support for Linux with Grid Autosport. Uh, the exact quote is, not at launch, but it is something we're looking at. And having discussions around, uh, oh, bleh, here, let me read this again better. Uh, not at launch, but it is something we're looking at and having discussions around. We'd love to support Linux. It is a matter of when, not if and for what titles. So really exciting, they seem to be, I mean, nothing official, but they seem to be ready for Linux, you know, really excited for Linux. So that'll be, like I said, they said it's not going to be at launch, but that would be something down the line. So another, another, another game or company given that push for Linux. Um, so yeah, we just went through today real quick, real bits of news. I didn't want y'all to uh, be in the dark for your water, cool talk, water cooler talk. Uh, but once again, this is WSGF News. I am the, the Destroyer, Simon. Uh, oh! This week, Boss Man Skip was on the tr uh, was a True PC Gaming. I'm going to have to look this up. But he was on a podcast talking. That's uh, so why I'm doing this. He, oh, yes, it's a True PC Gaming uh, podcast. TP, uh, TP, TBC Gaming uh, podcast, or TBC podcast. He was on there, and they were talking about uh, hardware, uh, do-it-yourself versus uh, pre-built machines, the, the actual cost of PC gaming, uh, the uh, viability of Linux, which, you know, they were kind of like, eh, about, and I'm going to disagree with, with Skip, but uh, I think, especially with all these 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 uh, companies getting excited about Linux. I think Linux is going to be the 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 next operating system. That's just my opinion, no official. 
but especially with the Steam box and everything like that. But they were talking about that. So check that out. I'll link that below. Um, yeah, give it a listen. It's a good hour. But uh, yeah, check that out. I gave a shout, quick shout out. Very, very small shout out to the to us. So awesome. But uh, oh, also if you're in the Houston area or the Texas area and you feel like driving down to Houston, May 23rd to 26th, we will be at Comic Palooza with our booth. AMD will be there in some form or fashion, whether it's there physically or in spirit. Ergotech the same way. They'll either be there physically or in spirit. And we'll definitely be there. Skip will be there. I'll be there. Peanut will be there. Lasky, Chris uh, will be there. And uh, maybe some helpers and stuff like that. So come check out some of these uh, systems we have, like a 3 by one 5 by one We'll have the Oculus Rift. We'll have 4K gaming. We'll have a Steam box out. So the gambit. You can check out the gambit. So that'll be just the gamut of things you can do. So once again, this is WSGF News. Uh, this is episode 9, I think. Man, we're getting there. We're almost over the 10 hurdle, so we're doing good. Well, we'll check you out next week. Uh, hopefully, Lasky and I will be back together. Uh, if you want to tweet, check out the tweet. At uh, WSGF is the main account. I am at the Destroyer FTW. You can check out Chris at at Computer Lasky or Computer Lasco. It'll be I'll put it here. Um, oh, we are podcast at WSGF.org. If you want to send us an email, if you have any. You know, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and you know, send us any sort of comments, what you'd like to see, you know, things we, we're doing good, things we're not doing good. Because this is really just for you. Um, but yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you next week.